that there is only one Jesus Christ. <laughs> right? And he is the rightful ruler of the earth after the time of unveiling, when all of the earth knows the truth. Christ rules for the thousand years of light on the earth, on the physical realm, in the physical form, being the son of Adam with rulership rights. That is the chair of Christ. That is the throne of Christ next to your heavenly Father in heaven. This is the status of of the throne straight away. Already it's established. It's not an if-then statement. It's something that already is. After Isa, of course, comes, after Jesus, Son of Mary, comes the messenger Muhammad. Now, of course, the messenger Muhammad, he was in Mecca when he began getting the revelation. Of course, that represents command and represents the word. But he doesn't become actually in a position of command authority until he moves to Medina. Of course, many people respect his command authority and respect him as their leader, but it is when he goes to Medina that an Islamic city is established and the city is named as Medina to Nabi, the city in his honor. And he is given command authority and the leadership status, and we recognize him as being again a prophet, and a leader with command authority, right? A person who has command authority of rulership. And of course that includes fighting and war, but many people think, okay, a spiritual leader and a warrior. It's very kind of silly because that's not really the definition. It's a leader who has command authority spiritually and in the matters of the world, right? There are many messengers who were just, uh, many prophets who were just, spiritual guides who came in physical form and of course they can teach you of the world but they weren't rising to the level of leadership right we said david is the first to take command authority and solomon takes command authority jesus on the other hand takes spiritual authority but does not take command authority why because he knows that his throne and his rulership is specified could he choose and say yeah i'm going to rule and take over rome that was not his scheduled role. It's not that he's unworthy, it's that he has a scheduled role to rule at a certain time and that is a noble act. That is his moment in the chair to rule over the earth at the time of the golden age. This is the whole beauty of the point, right? That is, that is what he, he wanted to have happen, right? Everybody has their own schedule specifically. Now the prophet of course leads and rules for as long as he rules but when it comes to the chair, of course, we think he doesn't rule in the system of a chair as a king or a kingdom. As a matter of fact, we all know the very rulership of the messenger is what? Omar, the uh, companion who later becomes the second Khalifa, comes in to see the prophet lying on a mat made of date palm fibers. And when the prophet rises up, you see the the markings in his skin from the from the from the mat, and Omar is crying, and he says, "Oh, messenger of Allah, these other false rulers and kings of the Khusros and the Persians and the Romans, they are enjoying treasures and royalty and thrones and all kinds of worldly treasures, and I see you, oh messenger, lying here on a on a mat, just." ruining your very skin and he's crying at the sadness of it and the messenger is reminding Omar that isn't it enough that they have all these treasures of this world and we don't have these treasures of this world but we have the heavenly kingdoms we have that which is in the heavens and that which is in the inner realms of the inner kingdoms of the soul and the light and we have that which is everlasting of course, that was the nature of the chair, of the consciousness level that the prophet was trying to achieve. Of course, again, the final messenger establishing the final leadership with the final word in Revelation and the final chair of rulership. And we claim that there is no one coming, no messenger, no ruler, and no leader, and no one on the earth has the right to say, I claim the chair other than the messengers. 
No, right? If I claim the right of leadership, it is in line with the messenger. No one comes except following the lead of the final messenger to the physical realms, the last soul of light to descend, the last being chosen as a messenger is the messenger Muhammad. No final messenger is coming until the end of the final tribulation, and then Jesus Christ comes to confirm the kingdom of heaven on earth under the authority of the sons of men. Right? That's the end. The final messenger who has the chair is the messenger Muhammad, and no messenger comes between him and Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, when he comes, he doesn't come with a new messenger. He comes for the golden age, and the final tribulations are over. We are at the time now, before the changing of the sun, and before many of the major tribulations. That is the basics of the understanding of the chair. Let's throw in one more little chair scene. Abraham Lincoln, for my brothers and sisters here in the United States. You see, Abraham Lincoln, commander-in-chief, because we mentioned the commander-in-chief. We want to throw them in a little tidbit. For the brotherhood. We said there's only one brotherhood. My name is Salim, and I am a Muslim. And what you are looking for on this earth is finding a Muslim who you really understand that he is trying to submit his will to the will of Allah, that you accept the title Muslim. Because Muslim is a title that many people use very loosely, brothers and sisters. You accept the title that he is a Muslim, and you accept that by his actions and his character and his dealings with you, <laughs> he treats you like a son of Adam, like a brother. And if you find someone who is Muslim, and you find someone who you think is your brother, then maybe you have found more than you thought. Because true leadership doesn't walk around saying, I am your leader, follow me. I am a speaker. I am the leader. I am the spokesman for this or that. But you're looking for someone from the Muslims who is from the brotherhood. <laughs> well, there's only one brotherhood, brothers and sisters. Those souls who remember who their creator is and those souls who do not. And those souls who remember who their creator is and that they are the sons and daughters of Adam, they are from one family. They are one brotherhood. And they are not the enemies of each other. Our enemies are out there. They're unseen. And we are not afraid of them, brothers and sisters. We are aware fully. But there you have the great American commander-in-chief, the great Abraham Lincoln. You know, they say, when you think about who are the great commanders-in-chief and who are the great presidents of these United States, of course, right now we have people on the current time who do not accept the authority of the current commander-in-chief. They do not accept the legitimacy of the current commander-in-chief. They say that this current commander-in-chief actually isn't in the chair. His validity is in question, that he doesn't actually have command authority. Is it possible that many in the Brotherhood are missing something obvious? So there you have Abraham Lincoln. And they make a statue of him, a monument, a statue. Are they doing it as a sign of jahiliyyah and ignorance? Are they doing it based on the knowledge? Based on the knowledge of the chair? Based on the knowledge of Mo Moses? No. Based on the knowledge of David? No. Based on the knowledge of Solomon? 
designing structures based on sacred geometry with examples of people? Is it possible that the very brotherhood who make things and are master masons in America are the same brotherhood of the Muslims? You have Abraham Lincoln sitting in a chair in the Lincoln Memorial steering towards the east. Well, what does it mean to get the light of the east, to get the knowledge of the east, to direct yourself towards the east? The rising sun, the place of the rising sun, the sign of the rising sun. Don't pray between the two horns of the rising sun. We do not worship the rising sun. We don't worship the sun. Even though the sun is holy and it's a noble sign. We do not, like those in the east, like those in India, worship the cow. Even though the cow is a noble creation. Abraham is looking to the east and in front of his sight is the Washington Monument, the sacred square erect pillar of light. Pillar? Like Abraham? The sacred square? Ab Abraham? Like Abraham? Abraham and Abraham. Square, square. Abraham is looking at the sacred square. The reflecting pool. Water. And then behind the sacred square, the sacred monument, with a capstone. A pyramid? Like a lion in Egypt? Abraham Lincoln sitting on a chair with authority like a lion overlooking the sacred monument with a pyramid on top, the sacred square, based on a Masonic pattern, then two miles away is the Capitol building with the Capitol dome, with the sacred circle, the sacred square, the sacred circle. Abraham Lincoln sitting on a chair looking at the sacred square monument of the pillars of light, the warriors of light, overlooking the divine feminine circle, the curve circle of the 72 natures, of the 72 star-seeded light being essences, the square masculine, and the 72 feminine. Abraham Lincoln sitting on the chair. Do any of you, Master Masons, have a clue are there any Master Masons left? Any true Masons who have true knowledge of the sacred square and compass? Now the Washington Monument is situated between the Capitol Building and Abraham Lincoln. Directly in the center? No. It's offset based on sacred geometry. Based on the golden ratio. Based on the square and compass of a master mason, based on the knowledge of the Temple of Solomon. My name is Salim Siddiqui. I am a master mason. At what level? The level of the sacred square. And I don't think there are any master masons in the West who have figured out what's going on yet. It's time to take a break. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.